Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and today I'm going to be showing you how I've created a fall bookstagram theme and the process that I go through in order to take my photos for the week. So if you guys didn't know, I have a bookstagram account way before I was on YouTube. I was on bookstagram and I've been posting photos consistently for three or four years. I love Bookstagram. It was my first introduction to the book community and it's such a great place to talk about books. And I've been wanting to make a Bookstagram themed video for a while but I've been struggling to come up with a way in which to do so and now that fall has officially started, it is officially the fall season now, I figured I'm not show you guys the behind the scenes of my bookstagram and everything that goes into taking photos. So personally, my process is that I take batch photos. So since I go to school and have tennis after school, I have no time to take photos during the week, but I still like to post every day consistently. So I take six or seven photos each weekend that I then post throughout the week. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is showing you guys all of the different photos I will be taking. So first things first, let's talk about the books I'm going to be photographing. The first book I'm going to be taking a photo of is Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. I am a part of the Penguin Teen blog tour for this book. It's happening over the next couple of weeks, so my day to post is tomorrow. Today's Sunday, tomorrow's Monday. So my day to post is tomorrow. I'll probably do like a flat light kind of thing with this one. We'll see where my inspiration takes me. But this is the fourth book in the Miss Peregrine series. I actually haven't read the other books. I read the first one twice, but then was never able to make it to the other two. But this cover looks really cool, and I'm super excited to be able to promote this. The next book I'm going to be taking a photo of is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is a villain superhero-like story that's very dark and awesome, and its sequel actually comes out on Tuesday, so that's why I'm going to be photographing this, because I am so excited about the sequel, and I definitely want to express that on Instagram and post about it, so I'm so excited. The next book I'm going to be taking a photo of is Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. This is a book I read a couple weeks back but haven't had a chance to post about yet, so I just want to take a photo in order to share my thoughts on Instagram and more information about this book. I posted about it way back in the summer when I first got the ARC but haven't had a chance to follow up since then, and this photo is pretty perfect for fall. I mean, it does have blue, but I mean, this cover is stunning. And then the next book, I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to take a photo of yet, but it's either going to be Children of Blundbone or The Hate You Give. They have very similar color schemes and I could take a photo of both of them in the same shot. I don't know, they're quite different. I might do this one because the movie adaptation is coming out in just a couple of weeks, but at the same time I'll probably want to take a photo and post it closer to the movie adaptation, so I might do this one too. I don't know, we'll see how I feel after a couple of shots. And then the next book I'm taking a photo of is Damn Soul by Elena K. Arnold. This is a book that I actually just got in the mail yesterday from HarperCollins. And this story looks so cool. As soon as I finish my current read, The Devil's Thief, it's definitely the book I'm planning on picking up because it's pretty short and it just looks so awesome. The final book I'm going to be taking a photo of is The Graces by Laura Eve. I bought this book a while ago. I don't remember exactly when, but I've been meaning to pick it up since then. I've heard it's a little bit creepy and a little bit spooky, so it's definitely giving me Halloween vibes, which is why I want to take a photo of it. I haven't read it yet, but it's definitely on my near TBR, especially with Halloween approaching, so I'm excited to introduce some darker Halloween vibes into my feed. So those are the books I'm going to be taking photos of. Now let's get to photographing. Also, I am a little bit ahead of the game this week. I took this photo this morning at a coffee shop. So I already have one photo for this week down. Taking photos in public is a completely different thing. Maybe I'll do a whole video around that. I don't know. We'll see. But I do have one photo taken already. So Penguin Teen gave me these handy dandy little props to use. A series of photos from the book or inspired by the series and some little clips and some rope. So I'm definitely going with a flat life for this one because I want to showcase all of these incredible photos. So when I first started taking this photo, I really wanted to use all of the pictures that had been included in the package, but I then figured out that that would be too much and would just take up the entire photo. So eventually I took out the ones that matched the covers of previous books and instead just used the ones that kind of had never been seen before and I thought that they were more colorful and they would just work better in a photo, again, because they'd never been seen before. 
so I tried to get the placement. I tried a couple different things, added some pumpkins to give it more of a fall vibe, added a sweater to give it more of the cozy vibe, had to move the sweater around to make it look right. I added a little witch pen. I tried something that didn't work and then settled on using a rope I'd actually gotten in a previous PR package that kind of matched the twine. So it ended up coming out good. This is the before edition. And then now this is the editing. This filming didn't really work as well as I'd been hoping, but you can get a little bit of a sense of what my editing process looks like, even though the footage itself isn't the best. So this is how the photo came out, and that is the final edition. So as you saw, that was a little bit of the behind the scenes into taking a flat lay. I like to use flat lays every once in a while. I've done themes where I've done only flat lays, where I've alternated, and sometimes they just take a lot of effort and a lot of time. So right now I'm just doing them once in a while whenever I feel like it and whenever I have props I can use. You guys also saw a little bit of the behind the scenes into my editing process. I use three different apps to create my fall theme and the fall look that I like. I use Visco, I use Lightroom, and I use Snapseed. So highly recommend all three of those apps, but if you can't get them all, the one I would recommend the most is definitely Visco. It's the only one I've used up until like a month ago when I started using the other two. Visco has the best filters, and you can basically do everything in Visco if you want to. I just like using the other two. I think it gives my photos a little bit more of a different look that I like a lot, but editing is really a learning process. So next up, we are taking a photo of Vicious. I really don't know what I'm gonna do with Vicious yet, but you know, we'll see. You know what would be such a useful prop right now that I don't have bones of some kind or a skull? Because look at this cover. I don't have Halloween decorations. I have not bought skeleton parts in the past, but now I'm really wishing I had because it makes such a good photo. It struggles being bookstagrammer sometimes. So this particular spot on my bed, this like corner right here, is a spot I've only really started using for photos recently. I had never used it before, but I don't know why I started getting inspiration to do like white on white kind of backgrounds and it's worked out really well. It provides like solid background and there's nothing else distracting in the back, which I like a lot. So I'm gonna be using it again. I've been using it pretty consistently since I started my fall theme and gonna continue that pattern. So this is the site of today's vicious shoot. So believe it or not, I may not have had bones, but I actually did find these painted white sticks that kind of looked like bones and that worked. I had to try a couple different angles for this, move a couple things around. I ended up adding a little bit of black to match the cover. Only one of those came out. We'll see. As you can see, these are the white sticks I used. I literally just used a dress for the black fabric. You know, you can use anything when it comes to bookstagram. It all works, and of course, the book itself. Okay, so I decided not to film the editing process on this one because when I did it with Map of Dates, it just looked weird on camera, I think. I mean, I haven't reviewed the footage yet, obviously, but I think it just looked weird. So instead, I'll just show you the before and after. So. You saw the setup, you saw me taking the photo. This is how the photo came out with no editing whatsoever, just purely the photograph that I took. And then after the three apps that I used and the different editing processes I went through, this was the final product. So you can see it looks quite a bit different. The red is definitely a different shade than the actual cover, which was not what I was intending, but you know, it happens. I hadn't taken a picture of a cover this red or this particular shade before. I had taken a picture of the spines of a couple different red books last week, and that didn't come out weird looking. I'm not gonna say this is weird looking. I like how it looks in the end, and I'm definitely gonna post this photo, but it just was not what I was expecting, which is fine. That happens in Bookstagram, and a lot of times it leads to good things. So that was vicious. Let's move on to what are we gonna do next? Let's do Blanca and Roja. Why not? I think I'm gonna go with the same place for Blanca and Roja, but I am gonna do a different photo. We'll see if this works because I don't want to do another flat lay because I will have just posted a flat lay. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out. We'll see. So I know I said I love this cover and I really do, but I just don't think the blue is going to work with fall, so don't kill me. But I am going to use the front cover page, which means I'm going to fold the book back like this and take a photo of it. I did something similar with The Wicked King a couple weeks back and it turned out great. I actually love the photo I took of The Wicked King quite a bit. So I'm going to do something similar with this. 
I'm gonna try the light background. If I don't like that, then I'll move back to the dark background. Actually, I think I might just go straight for the dark background. Let's try that. So this ended up being one of those photos that just took forever. I had to arrange the setup in a bunch of different ways, had to take the photo from a million different angles, and it just took a while to get the shot that I was looking for. I put the flowers upright, put them down, did like a straight up flat lay where I was all the way above and then also took it from angles around the book it was just a lot of repositioning myself as well as the props that i was using and you know that happens sometimes in bookstagrams some shots go quicker than others some just take a really really long time and that was the case with this one but in the end it always ends up being worth it and even when you're using just two or three props you're not even doing something super complex that ends up being the most difficult and taking the most time so that photo was just proof that some pictures take longer than others. There are a couple I can get done in one, two, three shots at most, and there are others that take 15 minutes because I have to take a million and one different angles and shots of it, and that was one of them, but I should edit it first. In the end, I really do like how the photo came out. It's not at all the shot I was expecting to take going in, but again, that's the beauty of Bookstagram. You come out with shots that you don't expect, but that you love anyway, even if your original vision doesn't work out exactly how you hoped it would. So that was my shot for Blanca y Roja. It was a little bit of a different kind of flat lay, super close up and not as crowded. Now I'm going to be moving on to... I think I'm going to go with Damsel because there's a lot I can do with this one. And I think I'm going to try and do flat lay again. No, but I've already done two of those. Maybe I'll go with Children of Blood and Bone and do the light background. And then we'll see if I should do another flat lay for Damsel. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So as you can see, I did in fact end up going with Damsel on the white background. I was originally going to do a flat lay and that just really didn't work. I didn't like the angle, I didn't like how it was looking. I tried a bunch of different ways to do that but ended up just putting it upright and positioning the blanket in a way that looked really cozy and really soft and tried a bunch of different angles from here and ended up with something that I think I liked. So in the end for Damsel, I ended up going with the shot that was a little bit from a lower angle and a little bit closer up, just because I liked how it really made it feel like the blanket was almost coming off the screen a little bit. Even though the focus in this photo wasn't entirely perfect, I ended up going with it just because I liked the angle so much more than the one from above. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this photo turned out. It definitely won't be the last time I'm taking a photo of this book. There are so many things I could theme photos around and I have no doubt it's going to be a great book so there will be more photos coming. So now we only have one more photo left to take for this week and I actually chose one more book than I needed to so I think I might take a photo of Children of Blood and Bone just because it's a great book. Just kidding. I'm actually not going to take another photo. I don't really have time right now. I have so many other things to do that I'm just going to have to be the typical procrastinator, last minute person I am, and wait until next Saturday to take a photo for next Saturday. I really don't have time and no more motivation today. That's how it goes sometimes with Bookstagram. You lose inspiration or motivation partway through a photo session and there's really nothing you can do to fix that because at this point the only thing I would do is start recycling old setups I have and I don't want to do that. I like being creative and coming up with original things. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of an inside look into my bookstagram process and how to make a fall bookstagram theme or feed. Some general tips I would say are focus on warm tones, use any props you can find that you think relate to fall. They don't have to be bookish, they don't have to be tied to a certain book. I used pumpkins and rope so that tells you you can use just about anything and use blankets or sweaters or really anything you can to create that cozier vibe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely let me know down in the comments if this is the kind of video you liked and you want me to do more bookstagram themed videos. I could do seasonal theme type videos or also just focus on like flat lays versus setups, taking bookstagram photos in public. I have so many things I could do so let me know down in the comments if you want to see any of that. My name is Jordan. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads at Page Travels. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. It would mean a whole lot to me if you guys would subscribe and I will see you soon.